Hi guys, welcome. Welcome everyone. All right, I'm gonna give everyone a second to join us and then we're gonna start. Yay, welcome all the first timers and pros, not only first timers. I'm gonna quickly take a look and see if there are any um, questions in chat that I can answer while we wait for everyone. But yeah, I'm just gonna give everyone maybe two more minutes until 6.35 to join us and then we're gonna start. Oh, hi guys. Yay. All right. One more minute and we're gonna start it. I'm just gonna make sure there are no uh, scammers posting on our page because you know that happens and we have to delete that on time. So I'm gonna get on that. <laughs> yeah, guys, if you ever are on our Facebook and let's say you um, are CVPD, yes, to an event to join, a free event that goes either on YouTube or on Facebook Live, and you see people posting random links and comments and saying, join here, goes lives here. Just so you know, those are all scammers. So feel free to report them um, to Facebook. We usually try to delete them as fast as they come. Never click on the links in comments, especially posted by someone who are not us on our Facebook. And especially if they ask for your credit card information, that's a big red flag, just a big no-no. If that happens, you know that's a scam. Don't do that. If event said it's supposed to be free, it is free. All right, I banned all the scammers. Now we can start. Hi guys, welcome everyone. My name is Vera. I'll be your instructor for tonight and we're gonna paint a mermaid right here. Well, there are good things and bad things about this painting, mostly good things. Good thing, biggest good thing is it's really fun and it's not crazy complicated. So it's one of those more relaxing painting versus the ones that uh, take a lot of effort, a lot of concentration. This one is fun and breezy, easy breezy. Now, thing that's maybe not so good, ideally you should have pre-sketched your canvas because we provided pre-sketch way in advance as soon as we made this event a month ago. Uh, we put a pre-sketch right away into description there is a link and you can just print it out and there are a couple different ways you can transfer the image onto your canvas we usually suggest so I'm gonna show you let's say this is the image this is not the image but let's say this is the image so what we usually suggest you do is we suggest that you put the print out on the back of your canvas the printed side close to the canvas then tape the corners then put this on a window and trace it because you will see as the window shines through this and through your canvas, the outline would be very visible on this side. So you can just trace it with a pencil or you can put it um, toward over the light, just any light. So the light shines through it and trace it on this side or alternatively, this one is a very simple silhouette. So you can even print it out and then cut out and then trace it with uh, a pen through the cutout. That's an option too that you could do. 
Or if you have a transferring paper, you can use a transferring paper. Honestly, whatever you would like. So I'm gonna be showing you how to sketch the mermaid, but really, really fast. So if you came completely unprepared, you don't have your canvas pre-sketch, that's okay, but you're gonna need to keep up with my speed on pre-sketching this because it's not gonna be fair to everyone who came prepared with a sketch if we spent 30, 40 minutes just sketching here because then everyone who came actually prepared for the sketch are gonna be just sitting bored for 30 minutes. So we're not gonna do that. If you um, need to sketch it now, that's okay. You can still do it, but you're gonna need to be speedy. Alternatively, you can always uh, print out that outline. Uh, the link is here on YouTube in the description of this event and also on Facebook in the description of this event as well. So you can print it out, transfer it. The video is gonna be here, it's not going anywhere. Uh, it's going to stay here on YouTube pretty much forever, so you can come back and do it any other time as well. All right, and guys, feel free to ask all the questions that you may have here in chat. I'll be responding them uh, to them to the best of my ability. Um, if it gets a little crazy, I might miss a comment or two, but please ask again if it's something very important. I will do my best to respond. All right, now. Uh, Yes, fluffy cat one. That was a difficult one. <laughs> okay, let's go through supplies. Make sure we have everything that we need. So ideally, you need a pre-sketch canvas or not pre-sketch canvas. Not ideally, but that's okay too. And the canvas has to be white, whether pre-sketched or not pre-sketched, white canvas. Um, you can do any size. In my case, it's 16 by 20. But if yours is smaller, that's okay too. It really depends how much background you want to have for your mermaid because that printout, uh, depending on which canvas you put it on, uh, it's going to have either more background or less background, but either is totally fine. Next thing we're going to need is something to mix our paint on. I have this wonderful plate right here. And we're going to need some water, so make sure you have that. We are going to need a pencil if you don't have a sketch. If you do have a sketch, you don't need it. Well, you can still use it for the mountain because we still have to sketch that and um, our moon and our water. So good to have, but if you don't, that's okay. You can always use small brush and some light paint, like light blue, for example, and do that with a brush and light color. After that, we're gonna need a piece of paper towel. And there so make sure you have that and brushes i'm going to be using standard set of three brushes here large medium and small in my case my large and my medium are square brushes and i have a small detailed brush as well but if you don't have medium square and small brushes that's okay too um you can use any brushes that you have in a house the only thing i would say that you do need a good detailed brush because there are quite a few details here so you will definitely need that as far as paint, I'm going to be using primary colors only, which is yellow, red, blue, plus black and white. And I'll be mixing them into shades, all shades of this. Now, for this particular painting, it doesn't matter which shade of yellow you use or which shade of red. However, it does matter which shade of blue you use. And it needs to be more on a greener side. So if you have primary blue, that would work. If you have greenish blue, that would work. If you have for thalo, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correct, but P-H-T-H-A-L-O, blue, that one would work as well. The only one I would probably advise against is ultramarine blue or any blue that has a um, hint of purple to it. Because here, we're right close to mermaid, we're gonna need to make more of a teal-ish color, and that color is better to make with a greener blue. If your blue has a bit of red or purple premixed into it, it's not gonna give you beautiful teal, but if you wanna replace teal with just light blue, it will work as well. So no big deal if that's the only blue you have, you can still do this, it's gonna turn out just fine. You just might need to modify it a little bit. And guys, I'm not 100% sure, I remember that uh, YouTube Live used to give you option to pause it and rewind if you need a bit more time to certain steps. I know sometimes they make changes, the same with Facebook, sometimes they change things around. So hopefully it still gives you that ability, but if not, again, the video is gonna stay here for uh, pretty much forever. So if you need to go halfway through or you wanna take a break and come back, that's okay too. The video will be here for you 
Or if you need another minute, you can always ask me in chat and say, one more minute, please, and so on. And then I would know how much more time you need. All right, guys. So I'm going to show you very, very speedy how to sketch a mermaid, just in case you don't have it pre-sketched. I promise you it's going to be fast. I'm not going to take too long. In case you already have your sketch prepared and you came all prepared, it's going to be maybe five, 10 minutes. So just chill, hang out with me for five, 10 minutes. And if you don't have your sketch ready, follow me. And I'll show you a piece of paper. All right, let's see if this is visible. So for the mermaid, you're going to position your mermaid somewhere around the middle of your canvas. And I'm actually going to start by putting three lines. Line, line, line. So it's like zigzag in a way. After that, I'm going to start working my lines. So I'm going to start with this one. I'm going to turn this one into, uh, I'm going to round it up right here and I'm gonna round it up on top. And I'm gonna move it here. And, ta-da, I have a tail. But I'm gonna add the bottom part to the tail. So I'm gonna start with two lines on the sides. Down and out, down and out. A little bit running out of space here. And then I'll do the inner part. That's a tail right here. After that, I'm going to move on to the body and I'm going to turn this into back. So I'm going to add a slightly curved line towards the outside. So not like this, but a little bit towards the back. And here, so this is going to be neck, there's going to be chest area and Okay, so we utilize the whole zigzaggy thing. After that, I'm going to add neck. And I'm going to add a face line just like this for now. I'm going to work it in a second. And I'm gonna from here add the hair. So the face looks weird for now, but that's okay. It should be. We're just putting things together, right? We're not doing details yet. We're going to do details in a second. And after that, I'm going to add the arm here. I'm just going to go from here to here. And only after that, I'm going to move on to the face. And now that I know where that line is, I'm going to lighten it up a bit. And I'm going to start by putting forehead, then nose. So out, in, out. The nose, the lips, and the chin. 
and return just one curved line into the face. Out, in, out, then down, straight line. So curve, 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 down, then lips, in for this part, then out for chin, and then down for the neck. So here is the fast, fast version of a mermaid sketch. And of course, you can modify anything you want. You can modify tail, you can make it bigger or smaller. You can modify the hair, the face, any part of it. Everything is completely modifiable. All right. I'm going to leave it for another second here. Trisha, yes, it will be available. Okay, I think that's a good amount of time, ho time, hopefully. Everyone has it ready now. Okay, now we're gonna move to our pre-sketch canvases. So I'm gonna move this one away and I'll grab this one and I have, as you can see, Mermaid pre-sketched here. Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna put our mermaid on a rock. So let me quickly outline a bit thicker mermaid, my mermaid so you can see it a little bit better. Cause I know it's a little bit faint, kind of hard to see. All right, now to this mermaid, we're gonna put the rock. So do you see the rock? You can technically make the rock any shape that you want, but for me, it's gonna be more of a um, two straight lines right here and lots of lines here. So I'm gonna start with this one. So somewhere right here, and I'm gonna put one line and then second line. And my rock is gonna end before the tail ends. So somewhere right here, do you see not, it's not gonna go as low as the tail. However, if you want yours to go lower, that's okay too. And after that, I'm gonna add the second part of the rock. So for the second part of the rock, it's more important that there are different um, shapes here. It's not particular how, what kind of shapes they are, but I'm gonna start with this bottom one. So somewhere right here, do you see it's um, right under this part, right around here? So around here, I'm gonna put something like this. And after that, I'm gonna bring it up. So from this middle of this rock, going up, I'm gonna add a couple sections. Okay. 
just to make sure it's not straight there. It can totally be any other shape. And after that, I want to add one more sticking out rock. Oh, actually, I want to add one more sticking out rock right here. And a smaller one around here. You can have more than that if you want. It doesn't have to be just two. You can have ten. But you can add them later as well. You don't have to sketch them now. Yeah, no worries guys. If you wanna do this later, that's totally fine. The video will be here. Now, once we have sketched this section, we're gonna move on to our moon. And I would suggest that you grab a plate or maybe a lid from the pot or something that you can just trace because it's a big circle. So if you have something traceable, that would be very helpful. In my case, I think this plate would work just fine. Actually, I need something bigger. This is a little too small, yeah. Uh, what should I use that's bigger? But yeah, something traceable. So find something that you can trace for this. Actually, I'm gonna manually make it bigger. You can freehand it too, that's okay. So I'm gonna trace it and then I'll trace it again to make it bigger. Now, where does it start? Where does it end? Doesn't really matter. As long as your silhouette of mermaid is positioned somewhere in the middle. Don't worry about the tail though. You're only worrying about mostly the top part. So I would say for this, I wanna position it around here. So like that, I would say, most likely. So right in the middle on the upper-ish section of the canvas is perfect. Outline this and oh, do not outline properly. So we do this. And because I want mine bigger, I'm gonna make it bigger manually. So I'm just gonna go around it. All right, I have my moon. I'm gonna give you guys a second to do that. And when you're ready, give me a thumbs up. You can tell me in chat that you're ready, say I'm ready or good to go and so on. And then we will move um, to our next step here. All right, I see a couple of readies, that's good. All right, I see lots of righties, that's exciting. Now, another thing I wanna do here is I wanna um, add my water. It doesn't really matter, we can always do this later, but we can also do it now, so why not? It should be a bit um, crossing your moon. So if your moon, if my moon probably ends somewhere here, my water needs to be a little bit higher. So I would say maybe right here. So it crosses my moon just a little bit on the bottom. Right here. Right here.
Yeah, do we have it? All right, and once we have our sketch, we're going to move on to the painting part. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to work pretty much um, at, at the same time on the top and the bottom. So let's say I had one color on the top, I will also add that color on the bottom. I'll add one color on top, one color on the bottom, and so on. And I'm going to start with the base for my moon here. Technically, we could start with outer side of the moon too. It doesn't really matter here what you start with, but I want to start with um, my moon, so why not? Let's start with the moon. Actually, never mind. I changed my mind. Let's start with this blue. Again, doesn't matter. This painting, either one, either way you start, is going to look really good. So let's start with this color. So we're gonna put all our colors on the palette though. So you don't have to um, only put a couple right now. You can put all of them. So I'm gonna put a blue, I'm gonna put white, I'm gonna put red, and I'm gonna put yellow, and I'm gonna put black, all of them. All right, so here are my five primary colors, white, blue, black, yellow, and red. Red, you're only gonna need the tiny touch. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dip my big brush, the biggest brush that you have, in the water, and after that, I'm gonna mix my uh, teal-ish color. So I'm gonna start with white. I'm gonna put white on the side of my plate. And to that color, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to make about medium blue, I would say. You're not aiming for a very light color, but you're not aiming for a very dark color either. Medium blue should be just fine. And then to that color, once you have that medium blue, I'm going to add just the tiniest, tiny smidge of yellow to give it a hint of this teal-ish color. And if it's not enough, if you feel like that did nothing, that didn't change color at all, you can add another smidge. Just grab another tiny smidge of yellow and add it in. Do not add more than that because it's gonna turn green really fast. Yellow will overtake it and it's gonna turn everything green if you don't want it green. So make sure you just add a tiny touch by tiny touch until you arrive at the right color. And then with this, we're going to go right around our moon. And you want to add a little bit more than what you want to see in the end because other colors are going to overlap over this color. So in the end, you're going to see less of it. And then right away, as soon as I have that, I'm gonna add just a tiny touch of white to this color to make it just a little bit lighter. And with this lighter color, I'm gonna go on the bottom of my canvas. 
And I'm going to start using the top edge of my brush. Let's get a little bit finer. And I'm going to add a whole bunch of lines right here. And you see, I'm not really avoiding my rock or mermaid because I'm going to uh, clean up my lines later. I don't have to be precise with my rock or avoid my mermaid. All this is going to be dark, so we can always uh, clean it up later. As long as you don't lose your lines. In my case, I can see my pencil through my paint just fine. So I'm not really going to worry about that. After that, I'm going to wash off my brush and really right away, I'm going to grab dark blue. And the reason why we have to do this fast, we can't wait for our paint to dry because once it dries, it's going to be very hard for us to blend. So guys, just as soon as you have it, uh, move on to the next color right away. So I'm going to grab my blue and I'm going to go right. And this is just primary blue, straight from the tube, not mixed with anything. And I'm going to add it right around my teal. And once I have that, I'm going to blend it into my teal. That's why I wanted to mix them right away so they don't dry. So I'm not even washing my brush with whatever little I have left in my brush. I'm going to start um, swirling, adding circular motion brush strokes towards my teal. And this only works if your teal is still wet. If your teal is already dry, you're going to blend it differently. So if your teal already dried, instead of using whatever you have left on your brush, you're going to wash off your brush. And with a clean slate, you're going to wash it off and you actually you're going to dab it off on a paper towel first. And then with that clean, slightly wet brush, you're going to go over at this uh, edge where two colors connect. So do you remember once you add the blue, there is an edge right between blue and teal because you have two different colors, right? So you're going to go right over that edge with a clean, slightly wet brush. And you will blend it that way. And what that will do, um, your brush that's clean and slightly wet will pick up that still fresh paint and it will lift it into a blend. It. And then right away, I'm going to blend my next color here. I'm not even going to add anything to the bottom right now. I'm just going to blend my third color on top to make sure my paint doesn't dry. And then we can wait for it to dry. After that, we don't need to blend anything on wet anymore. So my last color here, I'm going to use black. So without even washing my brush again, I'm just going to grab some black on it. And I'm going to go right onto the edges here, onto these corners. So do you see I did black there? And now I'm going to start blending it into the blue right away. So with just a little bit of paint that I have left over on my brush, I'm going to continue adding uh, circular motion brush strokes towards the center. So going the same way, just don't refill your brush and don't push hard on your brush. You want it to be very light. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side as well. I'm going to refill my brush. I'll fill in that corner. And then I'm going to blend it towards the middle in this wet, dark blue that we just added. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this very little corners right here. And then I'm going to give you guys some time to catch up because after that we don't need to blend anything on wet.
So guys, just so to review the top again, we started with teal. We had a teal right here, maybe like an inch, inch and a half for the size of my canvas. If you're using smaller canvas, it's smaller line. And then once we added the teal, then we um, took straight primary blue. So that was just dark primary blue right here. And right around till we added the primary blue and then we added, or we blended primary blue to that teal. Once we've done that, we finish the corners right here with a black paint and then we blend the black paint into this dark blue. So it's three color blending, teal to dark blue, dark blue to black. And you should do this all on wet because once your paint dries, this is much more difficult to do it. So it is better. It is best if you can do this on wet. It's not impossible to do it on dry, it's just harder. And now I can give you guys a couple of minutes to do all that to catch up. And then whenever you're ready, let me know, but no rush, we don't need to blend anything else on wet. This is the only thing we needed to blend on wet. And another thing to think about, if you wanted to, you could make the edges black as well, because we're already using black, we're coming to the edges here. So what you could do, you could just grab a bit more black and color all your edges with that color. And you can do all the way down on the sides as well. I'm personally not going to be doing the side because I hold my canvas all the time here. So it's going to end up on my hand and not on my canvas. But if you want to, feel free to do that. Is there a better way to hold your brush to blend? Not really. However you want, I would say the wider side down. Um, so I use it on a wide side, let me show you. So if this is my brush. I don't use it like this to blend. I use it like this, so wider side. But other than that, I don't think it matters. And also I saw, I remember seeing a comment here, question about what brushes we use any brushes that we can get our hands on. We don't have a particular brand that we use or recommend. Really, I have brushes that range in price from a dollar to like 20 bucks per brush. And I cannot tell you that the difference in quality is really big. I have lots of brushes from dollar store, they work just fine, but I also have expensive brushes from um, Curry's, from other art stores. So whichever brushes you can get your hands on, the only thing I would say uh, for brushes is I personally prefer for acrylic synthetic brushes. I find that natural brushes for me personally don't work at all for acrylic. So I never buy natural, natural brushes, only buy synthetic brushes. And I personally find that I like, um, I don't like very soft brushes. I like more of a brushes that have a bit of stiffness to them. They don't have to be very hard. I find hard brushes are hard to work with but I don't like super soft brushes either. So, that, but that's just my personal preference for brushes. Really, whatever works for you guys. It's such a personal thing. I would say try different kinds, see which one um, works for you and for the paint that you use as well, because different brushes work well for different kinds of paint. And even though there, we all may be using student grade acrylic, there is a big difference by brand as well, how they feel. Some paints are thicker, some paints are thinner, some paints are more solid, some more transparent, and all that will affect which brush you would prefer to use uh, with your paint. 
All right, so once you guys have it, give me thumbs up. No rush, but yeah, I'll give you another minute. I know it's a big step. So whenever you have it, give me thumbs up, but no rush. Yay, thank you. All right, I see a couple thumbs ups. So that's a good sign. I'll give everyone a couple more minutes. Ready, ready, that's good, done, ready, awesome. I see quite a few ready, thumbs up, that's great, guys. So after that, we're gonna move on to our water and we're gonna work on our water and we're gonna add right now, actually the exact same two colors on the water. We're gonna add our dark blue and black. The only difference, we're gonna use different brush. We're not gonna use that big brush anymore because we don't need it. So we're gonna use a smaller brush for the water. I'm gonna use not the smallest though, I'm gonna use my medium brush for the main part. So this is the brush I'm gonna be using. Um, this brush is quite versatile. As you can see, uh, it can make really thicker lines like this. So let me show you with a paint actually. It can make thicker lines but it can also make a really thin lines if you use the top edge. So for the main part, I'm gonna use the top edge of this brush. All right. So I'm gonna start not with black though. I'm gonna start with uh, blue. So I'm gonna grab primary blue. Straight from the bottle, this one, not mixed with anything. And I'm going to brush stroke from the outside in. Actually, I need a bit more water. Make sure you use water because we're covering white empty canvas and it's easier when your paint is um, wet versus when your paint is super thick and almost dry. So using the top edge, I'm going to add quite a few lines here from the outside in. And you see I'm covering all the white canvas here.
So these colors, I don't really blend here. The only thing I do is I overlap. So this lighter colors, I overlap lighter, uh, lightly with my darker blue. I can't really blend them because A, I don't want to. That's not the goal. I kind of want it brush chokey. And two, um, it's already dry and it's a bit difficult to blend on dry. So I'm mostly just overlapping it lightly. Where I have completely white canvas and I want to cover it up, I use a bit more paint on my brush and I push a little harder. And where I want it lightly, I just use a little bit less paint and I don't push as hard on brush. And by just lightly scraping the surface of my canvas, I mostly overlap that. All right, I'm gonna give you guys some time to do this. And again, whenever you have it, give me thumbs up. And then I'll show you next color, but no rush, take your time. Um, we're not in rush here. And yes, guys, let me know when you have it. Ready, first ready, yes. Good, good, good. Who else is ready? More ready is good. Good job, guys. Nice. All right, I see a couple more readies, but knowing how many of us are here, that's not too many. So I'm gonna wait another minute to make sure no one is falling too far behind. And then we're gonna continue.
All right, I see more thumbs up, so I think we can continue. Now I'm gonna move to black here. So I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna grab a little bit of black paint. And I'm gonna go from the edges again and I'm gonna brush in a bit of black. And again, notice I'm using the top edge of my brush. And you don't want equal amounts, um, brush in equal amounts of black from everywhere. You wanna have certain spots have more black, certain spots have less black and so on. So you see here, I added less, and then as I go down, I make brush strokes a little bit longer, and on, on up top here, I made brush strokes a little bit longer. I might add some smaller ones too. Let me show you guys closer to in a second. So do you see? I added uh, all flicks from here. Some longer on top, some shorter here, and then longer again on the bottom. And I added some really small ones here too that are not attached to the end of the canvas. And guys, um, this is not even halfway through. The paintings never look good at this point. They don't look good up to 60% through or even 70% through. And then on the last 40, 30, sometimes even 20%, that's where they come together and start looking really beautiful. So just bear with me. Um, yeah, bear with me. It's going to get there. We are not there yet. This is just a backdrop. We haven't even covered the whole canvas with paint yet. And once we cover the whole canvas with paint, that's about halfway through point. Then we're going to add layers. There are layers and layers and layers here to make it beautiful. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the other side. All right, so this should be good for now. Again, we're still gonna add more stuff here, but for now, this is good. This is a good backdrop. And once you guys have it, give me thumbs up. No rush though. Let me know when you're ready and then we'll move on to the first layer on our mood and the surrounding sections there. All right, good, ready, that's awesome. I see more radies, that's good guys. Oh, and this is what it would look like in the end. Do you see? We get in there slowly, but we're getting there.
Yeah, is everyone ready? Almost ready? Yes, good. All right, let's move to our moon. So, we're gonna do our moon with a couple different colors, but I'm going to start with a very, very light yellow. So actually, ideally, if you can, change your water right now, which I'm gonna do too. And the reason why is, you can do this with a dirty water, that's okay. But if you can, change it because your water is blue, and we're going to be using very, very light yellow, which is if you use your dirty blue water, it's going to turn into green. We don't want the green. So wash your brushes and change your water quickly. And I'll do the same, and then I'll show you the main. All right, I have my water here, it's clean. So now, I'm gonna grab another piece of paper towel as well, a clean one. Now, I'm going to start with a very, very light yellow. So I'm going to grab some white, scoop it on the side, then add a little tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of yellow. Mix it up, my very nice yellow. Nice and light. And I'm going to go right in the middle here, in a circular motion. You can lightly go over your um, mermaid too. If you feel like you can still see your outline, you can go right over it. Just make sure you don't lose your lines. You see? Because I can still see my pencil through, I'm going right over it, so I'm not avoiding anything. But if you feel like you're gonna lose your lines, then you can avoid it, it's totally fine. Now right away, as soon as I have a bit of this light yellow, so let's have a bit more. Now we're gonna be blending on wet here too, so we can't really wait too long. As soon as you have that, I'm gonna to move to straight yellow, straight from the palette. So I'm gonna grab yellow that's not mixed with anything on the same brush. You don't even have to wash your brush. And I'm gonna go around. You can go right to the edge What this. And then I'm gonna blend it into this light yellow. And you can, if you want to overlap your background a little bit, you can just very, very lightly. Yeah, it's gonna turn a little greener, but that's okay. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. And then once we have that, we're going to blend one more color in here. 
But first, I'm going to give you all a second to do this. And my last color, I'm actually going to do with a different brush. So I'm going to wash this brush off. And I'm going to go back to my medium brush, so this one. And I'm going to make um, orange color here. So I'm going to scoop some of this yellow on a side, from right here. What is your, my yellow called? Just primary yellow. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of black. Sorry, red. Not too much. I'm going to make it into orange. You see, just nice bright orange. If you have premixed orange, you're free to use your premixed orange too. And with this color, before this dries, I kind of have to do it right away. I'm going to go right here. So right where my moon ends, I'm going to add a couple of burst strokes of this orange. And then without refilling my brush with anything, I'm actually going to empty my brush a little bit so it has less paint left on it. I'm going to continue blending. So just lightly brushing into this yellow right here. The goal is don't refill your brush. Um, the main thing, yeah, don't refill your brush with orange. Use whatever little bit you have left on it and do it very lightly. Don't push on your brush. Just scrape the surface of your canvas. And of course, that's a technique if your yellow is still wet. If your yellow already dried, you're going to need to wash your brush. Then dab it on a paper towel and do this the exact same thing with a clean, very slightly wet brush and spread this orange color uh, with that almost dry brush. But in my case, it's still wet, so that's how I'm doing it. And I might add even a little bit more orange right here to make it a touch darker. And when you guys have it, let me know, give me a thumbs up, and then I'll show you what's next. But no rush. If you need a bit more time, that's okay. See, it's getting there. Little by little. Yes, the best part is the water. We're getting there. So what are we going to do right now? Let me just quickly tell you what is coming, what, are you, what to expect here. We're going to add a little bit of the lighter color, just a little bit, on around here and on our water. After that, we're going to add all the stars. And then we're going to move um, to our uh, this part. We're going to move to our water. Um, and then we're going to do our silhouette. But first, we need to finish the sky with all the splatters and all the stars. But before that, we, there's one more color that I want to add on our sky. We're almost there. All 
All right, so that one more color that I want to add is going to be lighter teal. And I'm not going to be using my large brush. I'm going to be using my medium brush here. So I'm going to wash up my medium brush. If you still have the place where you mixed your previous teal, you can mix in the same spot. Or even if you still have your previous teal, you can just add some white to it and you can use that color. I'm going to mix it from scratch. So I'm going to start with white. Then I'm going to add just a little bit of blue to it to make nice light blue. And once I have that, I'm going to add just a little touch of yellow to turn that into more of a teal color. And with the steel color, very, very lightly, I'm gonna brush in just a little bit right here. So around the edge of my moon, coming from the bottom. See, very, very lightly. So I'm not pushing on my brush at all. I'm just, I'm hardly scraping my canvas with this. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just a little bit of it. And Marie, my canvas is 16 by 20 inch, so it's bigger, but you can use any size that you want. Um, it really depends on how much of background you want on your mermaid. If you want more background, you can use bigger canvas. If you want less background, you can use smaller canvas. And also, as far as blow dryer, absolutely. If you have blow dryer handy, you can dry it with a blow dryer. If not, that's okay. The way I'm teaching, you don't really need a fast drying for this painting. Um, you can leave it to dry for longer. That's okay, too. So it's completely up to you. Total preference thing. Whatever you prefer. All right, and after that, with the same color, I'm gonna go on to my water. So I'm gonna water down my paint a little bit. And with this water down paint, you can now, you can use small brush if you want to, but I'm gonna be using the top edge of my medium brush again. <clears throat> Just because as I showed you earlier, it's very capable of very fine lines. But if your medium brush doesn't give you those fine lines, where I'm gonna edit, right here. So I'm not gonna add it closer to the middle. I'm gonna add it, do you see this edge where my light blue meets my dark blue? That's where I'm gonna add it. So let me show you. And it's gonna be more of a finer and smaller and shorter brush strokes. Do you see like this? You see I'm going right around there. <clears throat> and I'm gonna go right here, not in the middle, right here. And then the exact same thing on the other side too. So not in the middle, right here, where my dark blue begins. All right, and that's pretty much it for this color. 
don't think I want to be adding anything else to this color. So, and again, when you have it, um, give me a thumbs up. And we'll move on to the next color. And Marie, you can just come back here anytime. The video is gonna stay on our YouTube. It's not going anywhere, so don't worry. You can do this anytime. Yeah, it's gonna be available right here. I see some readies, that's good. All right, guys, and after that, we're gonna to move to fun part, which is splattering. So let me show you here. You see there are tons of splatter here. There's some yellow splatters, there's some orange splatters, there's some white splatters. So we're gonna splatter all those three colors, yellow, orange, and white. And you're mostly gonna aim on your sky. If some of it gets on your moon, not a problem at all, totally fine. Some of it gets on your um, water, that's okay too, but don't aim for it. Aim for it all to be on your sky. So, and I'm gonna use my large brush here. Technically, you could use medium brush too, it doesn't matter. And you can start with either one of the colors. I'm gonna start with yellow. So I'm gonna grab my large brush. And I'm gonna grab some white, some yellow. I'll mix them up. It's very important that you mix your white with yellow. And you see, I'm gonna grab a brush full of it. I'm not just grabbing on the end of my brush. I'm grabbing brush filled with this color, not just on the end. Because if you just take someone you're on the tip of your brush and you start splattering, it's gonna all fly like one big blob. You really need to have paint all in the bristles of your brush. And now there's a couple different ways you could do this. My favorite one that gives the biggest uh, splatter is you just put your canvas like this and you do this. And I'll show you what it does. It gives very big splatter. I personally love it. So you need to have you paint water down for this though, otherwise it wouldn't do it. So you have to water it down and grab a brush full. So that's one way to do it. Other way to have a bit smaller splatter involves two brushes. So you grab, let's say any other brush, keep it in one hand and make sure it's clean and doesn't have any. And then you hold your clean brush really close to your canvas and then with a brush filled with watered down paint, you bang on it like this. And that will give you splatter, but slightly smaller splatter. Or if you want really small splatter, you can just flick it with your finger like this really close to your canvas. I don't wanna do it because I don't like small splatter, but it's completely your choice how big your splatter is going to be. So I'm gonna continue with this one. And I'm gonna add a bit more all around the background, and then I'm gonna to switch to different color. All right, I think this is enough of my yellow splatter. So now I'm gonna to move to my orange splatter. So to the same color, I'm just gonna add a bit of red to make it orange. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing with an orange splatter. And again, you can choose the method that works for you, depending on how big you want it. And the one that works better, because we all have something that works for us, something that doesn't. So one of those ways will definitely work better than others. So whichever that one is, and stick with that one. So I did some orange ones too. And now I'm gonna add just a little bit of white. I don't wanna have too much white. So I took some white. All right, I have all my splatters. I am splattered out, no more splatters for me. But I'll give you guys another second, another minute to do this. 
And when you have it, again, give me thumbs up and then I'll show you what's next. Aw, thanks, Anne Marie. Nice, white instead of teal will work too, for sure. Yes, it will be available later. So guys, anytime, it will be here. And again, when you have your splatter, let me know. And then we'll move to the other colors. All right, I see already, that's good. That's good, guys. And you see there are lots of stars there and shooting stars, but those we're gonna add later because um, this is too wet. Right now we don't wanna smudge it, so we're gonna let it dry, we're gonna work elsewhere. And then last thing, we're gonna add white highlights on this whole painting anyway, so we will do that last when we move on to white highlights. So no need to do that right now. If you already did it, that's okay too. Not a mistake, but also don't rush. You don't need it yet. All right, guys. Now, I want to add a little bit of light yellow on my background, on the bottom part. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my medium brush, and I'm going to make some light yellow again. So just white mixed with some yellow. It's very important that you mix white with yellow and don't just use straight yellow. And with this, I'm going to go closer to the middle. I'm going to add some flicks. You can use the top edge of your medium brush or like the very tip of your medium brush or the small brush, either one will work. You see, I'm gonna add it from this middle out. But here, I'm not gonna add it right underneath the rock. I'm gonna go mostly, do you remember how we added uh, teal around here? So that's where I'm gonna add it.
Yes, I know it's getting better and better. And actually right away, I wanna add a little bit of orange too. So I'm gonna go back to that orange that I used right here or any other orange. And um, I'll grab just a little bit and I'll add it only on this side as a reflection on my moon. So I'm not gonna add it everywhere. All right, and now I'm gonna wash off my brush. And then I'm gonna move soon, not yet, but soon, I'm gonna move on to this cliff that, onto this rock in the water that our mermaid is sitting on. So again, let me know when you guys are ready for it. I'm gonna give you a couple more minutes, and then whenever you have it, we're gonna move onto that rock. Ready, that's good. It really is getting there, I agree. All right, guys, if we have this, we're gonna move on our rock. So I'm gonna grab my medium brush again and primary blue, straight from the tube, not mixed with anything. So this is my blue right here. Just gonna grab some of that. And I'm gonna color in, actually I might mix it with a little bit of white. Let's make it just a touch lighter. So it's like a medium dark blue. Now I'm gonna go around my mermaid's tail here. So do you see I colored my rock with a balloon first? That's okay. Your painting would not look like mine and there's a good reason why. 
And that reason is we're all unique individuals. Even if I paint this painting 10 different times, every single time I am the same artist, right? With the same hand, paint this painting, it's not gonna look the same. Just because every time you paint it with a different emotion, with a different mood, with a different maybe music on, or just different breakfast you had that day. And that varies, that makes it very different. So if yours is not mine, that's good. That's a good thing. That means you're a very unique person with a unique hand, unique um, mood you're in. So that's a good thing. It should look different for mine. Even if, for example, we were all uh, sitting here, 400, four of us, all artists with decades of experience, and we all painted this, this painting, we wouldn't have two paintings that look the same. So it's a good thing. We all have our unique individual styles. Thanks, Emory. Yeah, we can do small one. It's just, we don't usually teach that small. A, it's harder to see. B, the bigger it is, the longer it is. So if we were to paint something really small, it will take very short time. It would be like a 20 minute class versus a two hour class. So we try to keep it bigger. However, if you wanna paint this on a smaller scale, absolutely, go for it. We've seen people who would um, paint our paintings on like, a small canvases and hang them as a Christmas decoration. So you could do that too. Um, you can find small canvases in dollar store, or you can even buy actually the wooden cutouts for Christmas decorations with already holes made inside and paint on those and hang them on the tree. Absolutely. The minis look very cute. The only thing you're gonna need to use tiniest brushes ever if you do that. All right, guys. Now I'm gonna grab some black on my medium brush. And with this black first, I'm gonna go on the bottom. So right here underneath. See, I'm kind of outlining the tail. All this I'm gonna color in with black. And from here, I'm gonna add flex to the sides. And then a couple down. And you remember there were two rocks, so now is the time to put them back. So one was around here. Gonna add it again. And a little bit underneath that rock as well. And the second one was around here, so I'm gonna add that too. And a couple of brush strokes underneath. Yes, good, good job. That's right, be brave. And then guys, with the same black, I'm gonna go onto this upper rock and I'm gonna add a little bit right here on the edge of this rock and then I'm just gonna brush stroke it towards the middle a little bit, but not all the way. You want to darken up this edge, but you don't want to cover the whole thing and make it black.
And then I'm going to do something very similar from the other, other side as well. But here you can use either a small brush or just have smaller lines. See now both sides of our rocks is, are darker. After that, whenever you're ready, no rush, we can start coloring in our mermaid. And I'm gonna start from the very top. And you can use medium brush and small brush. I usually prefer to start by covering bigger sections with my medium brush. And then I switch to my small brush to do the finer sections such as face and anywhere else wherever I cannot reach with my medium brush. And then guys, once you move to this bottom part of the tail here, if you find, because you see it on the bottom, it's a completely black background. So if you feel like you are afraid to lose your lines and it's gonna be hard for them to recover them, uh, you can leave a hairline of empty background in between. You don't have to color it right to the background. However, if you feel like you can just freehand that again, then color the whole thing. You don't need to leave a hairline. In my case, I can just freehand that again. It's not a big deal. But again, if you're afraid to lose it, leave like a hairline of uncovered background. So you know where to end the outline later. And then I'm going to switch to my small brush and I will add all those small details with a small brush.
All right. Our mermaid is colored in. I'm gonna give you guys a minute to do this and then I'll show you our next steps here. And if you have any questions, feel free um, to type them in chat. I'll be happy to answer them to the best of my ability. Ready, that's good. How is everyone else? Good, good, good. And Marie, only, unfortunately, you can only ask questions while we're live because later we don't check comments to the video just because it gets a little bit too much sometimes. If there are not too many comments, we try to answer them, but sometimes when it gets very overwhelming, especially on Facebook Live videos, uh, we just can't get through all of the comments. However, if you have questions, you can always message us on Facebook. We'll be happy to answer all, we answer all the messages that we get on Facebook always. And we try to do it within um, an hour, as soon as we can, as soon we check comments all day, every day. So if you have any pressing questions, feel free to ask us. You can just message us on Facebook or uh, we do this YouTube Live or Facebook Live events about twice a week, the free ones. So you can just ask, you can just wait until next one and there'll be an artist live as well so you can ask them all the questions that you may have in live chat even the questions not relevant to your painting for example you went to our store you saw a certain paint you wanted to ask us if it's a good brand uh if um it's a good color and so on you can do that in chat with any of our artists on any live event so that's why live events are really good because then you can ask all the questions you have a live assistance right You're welcome. All right, guys, let's move to our next step. So now I'm gonna grab light blue paint, or you can use just white, that's okay too, but I'm gonna grab light blue. And I'm gonna grab small brush. So I'm gonna make take white, mix it with some blue, 
make it into a light blue paint. And by that, it should, I mean very light. I mean, it has to be very, very light. And with this, I'm going to outline the tail here. So I'm going to add a couple flicks. If it's still super wet and you want to wait until it dries out, that's okay too. You don't have to do it right away. In my case, it's almost dry. And then I'm going to flick from the bottom up and from the top down. And then I'll turn this outline going up. So right here, here on the outline, I'm going to add a couple flicks here and there. And after that, I'm going to move to light yellow, and I'm going to add a couple more brush strokes with light yellow. I still have a little bit of light yellow, so I'm going to use that. If you don't have any, you can mix it again, just yellow mixed with white, and you're going to use the same small brush here. And with this, I'm going to add a couple highlights on this rocks on the side. Remember, we have lots of rocks here. I'm going to highlight them a little. And I'll also highlight this other two rocks. And then I'm going to go to my final color, which is white. So I'm going to grab my small brush and some white. And I'm going to start by adding flicks onto my water with white. So closer to the already light sections. Just gonna add a couple of horizontal lines, flicks here and there with white. And notice I'm using different brush this time. I'm using small brush. See, I added quite a few highlights in white on the water horizontal, and now I'm going to add highlights on every single element. So a little bit on a rock, for example, just to flick here, flick there, on the outline of the rock, and then on the outline of mermaid. Again, just to flick here, flick there. You don't have to add a white highlight all around. And that's where you can fix things too with white. For example, if something's too big, like lips are too big or nose is too big, something out of proportion, you can always cover whatever is unnecessary with white. And of course, I'm gonna highlight on this side two rocks.
And guys, guess what's the last thing? Last thing is our shooting stars and stars. So I'm gonna start with the shooting stars, which are very simple. So you grab the same small brush and you flick. So you push a little bit harder where you start and then you slowly let go as you flick further. And don't make this straight, give it a little bit of a curve. So I'm gonna put a couple right here on top, some bigger, some smaller. And then a couple of really small ones right here, right here. And I want to turn one of those shooting stars into actual star. So this one, I'm going to turn into actual star. So from this top, I'm going to put a line up, flick, and then flick down and flick to the left flick to the right, and then a couple little flicks in between, all coming from the same dot. So do you see it now? It looks like actual star. And if you want to add a couple smaller, actually looking stars, you can do that too. So I'm gonna add one here. So just a dot and then flick up, flick down, flick left, flick right, a couple in between. Maybe one right here. And after that, the only thing that's left is to sign it. So find a good spot and sign it. You can put your initials, your name, um, anything that you want. I'm gonna sign right here. Ta-da! And just like that, it is fully finished. Yes, and Marie, for sure. Guys, after you're done, if you want to show your artworks to us, please do. And how you can do it, you can take a photo and post it on event page on Facebook. Right now, we disabled all the comments there just so scammers don't, put, don't post there. Um, but once we finish, I'm going to make a thank you post there with a link to the video for anyone who missed the video or maybe want to come back and finish later. So to that comment, I'm going to enable, um, to that post, I'm going to enable comments. So if you want to, please do. We love seeing your paintings. Um, take a photo, post it there. I'm going to send you a link actually to it. So you don't have to wander around trying to find it. So you know exactly where to go. And if this is your first time painting with us, and guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, maybe you don't know, but we do this uh, free YouTube and Facebook live events about twice a week, I would say. So uh, feel free to subscribe to our channel and feel free to just follow us on Facebook to stay updated on what we have coming up because we do have a lot of cool stuff. And we also do Zoom events. We do um, ticketed Zoom events pretty much every day. And the benefit of Zoom is that you can also show your painting in real life and it's smaller groups so you can get more one-on-one -on -one assistance from the artist and actually um, showing your painting, which is nice, but everyone has preferences, right? So, and all our Zoom Events come with recordings too, and you can access recordings anytime. Yay, I'm glad. All right, so I just posted a link on Facebook in comments here. That link will bring you to a Facebook page for this particular event. Again, it doesn't have um, posts that you can comment on just yet, but once we finish, as soon as we're done here, I'm going to post a make a post there that you can post your pictures in comments. And that way everyone who participated can also see them. So they're all in one place. So feel free to do that, but no pressure. If you don't wanna do that, that's okay. Now guys, while I'm still here, feel free to ask all the questions that you have. I will be happy to answer them for you. Um, if you are interested and wanna know what we have else coming up as far as events, 
I'm going to send you a link as well in comments here to all our upcoming events so you can see what we have on Zoom and what we have free coming up in the next months. We usually book about months, months and a half ahead. So you can see all our schedule about one month and a half ahead, which is great. Let me find the link for you. Oh, found it. And of course, guys, if you had fun and you want to tip me, I would never say no to that. There is no obligation at all. This event is free and I'm happy to be here and have this fun with you guys and being together. But if you'd like to say thank you through tipping me, I would never say no to that. And I'm going to post a link. You can do that through PayPal. Um, and I'm going to post a link here in comments as well in the chat. All right, that is posted. Thanks, Emory. Thanks, guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Does anyone have questions before I go? So if your highlight put, pulled your black onto the yellow, you just have to wait until it dries and do it again. So just wait until it's dry so it doesn't pull your paint and then do it again and cover it up. All right, guys, if no one has questions for me, thank you all for joining me and enjoy your night. Bye, everyone.